So we've got a fun one for today. Uh, I did a daily digest on this deck on Tuesday, which is also the deck or the day that I'm recording this. So uh, pretty fresh in my mind, and I don't know. Standards kind of in a lull, but not really. I think the format is still still shifting, and it's still pretty uh, interesting, at least to me. But for the most part, it is the same decks over and over and over again. So uh, decided to spice it up a little bit and play with one of my daily digest brews. So. Uh, this deck comes from Japan, underscore Matsugin, uh, is a guy that has just really impressed me in the last six months. Uh, has had several Daily Digest worthy decks up for discussion, and uh, dude is just doing a ton of work, like building all these sweet decks. So, definitely wanted to spotlight this, as this is one of the coolest decks I've seen in a while. He played it in a PTQ Finals on Magic Online and finished in the top 32, so... Uh, not an insane finish or anything, and I'm not sure how far along this deck is. Uh, you know, like, maybe it was, like, the first pitch brew that he made and, and you know, had not a lot of tuning involved or anything, but uh, there is a lot of potential here. So, uh, we've seen these Ornithopter, Springleaf Drum, Ghostfire Blade, and Soul Artifact decks, and for the most part, they've been, like, solidly Tier 2, but uh, Metsugan has played... Like the Death Mist Raptor Den Protector package in here. And to go along with that, he has some graveyard elements. There's Seder Wayfinders. There's Commune with the Gods. And once you're doing that stuff, you have uh, some, some good Delve enablers. So we have some Hooting Mandrels and Treasure Cruises in the sideboard. So overall, there's a lot of stuff going on here. But it's actually really cool how he brought it all together. Where uh, things like, uh, you know, the Morph package goes really well with Ghost Fire Blade. And if you go Ornithopter Springleaf Drum, that means that you're playing a turn two Morph, and that's also pretty cool. Uh, if you have Graveyard shenanigans going on and can play Hooting Mandrels, that gives you another thing for Stubborn Denial. So uh, all of this kind of like adds up into this package where there's a bunch of little synergies, and it feels like at times you're playing different decks. You know, you're going to get like the Artifact draw and then like the Morph draw maybe with the Obscuring Aether, and you just kind of go off that way. But I like how everything just kind of comes together here, and it sort of makes sense. So... Uh, in my mind, I see this as like a fish style deck where you're trying to produce like a cheap threat and protect it with some counter spells like Stubborn Denial. You have Shrapnel Blast to finish, which is also pretty powerful with Den Protector. And uh, I feel like the decks that go under it are going to be pretty difficult matchups, and the sideboard addresses that, uh, you know, by using half of it to try and compensate for that perceived bad matchup with like the mono red decks and such. Um,. The control decks seem like they would be pretty good matchups. And then mid-range is, is the iffy one, where if it's like Abzan mid-range, that seems like it could be kind of bad because they have a lot of the same stuff going on with Den Protector, Death Mist Raptor. Uh, they have Abzan Charm to Exile and Soul Artifact, even if it's on a Dark Steel Citadel. Uh, so that matchup might be pretty tough, but if there's any other sort of mid-range deck like Mardu Dragons or whatever, just like, uh, I mean, I guess like uh, Crackling Doom is kind of a big issue, but... You still have stuff like Stubborn Denial to stop that, and this deck is like, it can it can get some insane draws, you know, like Ornithopter Springleaf Drum is, like it uses a lot of cards to just basically make an extra mana, but uh, it also just like turbos you throughout the early game, so I really like that aspect of it. There's also some Elvish Mystics and Obscuring Aethers, which granted, there aren't a lot of turn one green sources. I even added an extra land to Yevmai Coast because 16 lands seemed too few. And, like, there's Shivan Reefs, which, you know, your deck is almost mono green, uh, aside from a, a few blue spells, a few red spells, but I feel like the Shivan Reefs are probably not necessary, or at the very least could be mana confluences, but, yeah, I don't know, like, I, I think this deck has a lot of potential, it's doing some potentially broken stuff, which, uh, we haven't really been exploring in Standard, it's mostly just been like, oh, it's, you know, what mid-range deck is the best deck to play this week, or whatever, and... And this deck is kind of just like, no, we can do something different. So I really like that aspect of this deck, and I'm, I'm excited to actually start working on it. So, yeah, mana base might be an issue. Maybe the lack of synergies between some portions of the deck are going to be an issue as well. But uh, I feel like there is something here, and we can make a little something happen. So my first thought, actually, was there's an, a, like another version kind of like this that is floating around where it's got like the Insul Artifact stuff, but it also has like the Jeskai Ascendancy combo. And that might be another way to go with it, especially since Shouto is working on was working on Jeskai Ascendancy combo with Den Protector Deathmiss Raptor. So it's like maybe we can just like slap all that together, just play like 
you know, the Dark Steel Citadel Jeskai Ascendancy deck. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, this deck looks pretty sweet to me. Uh, I'm not expecting too much, but uh, I'm mostly just trying to play, get a feel for the deck, see where we want to go in the future, and uh, see if there's anything that's like particularly bad. And, you know, just figure out what I want to do to make changes and such. So, uh, this is this is step one of the brewing process here. Is just, like, playing an event that is mostly competitive with this deck that you think has a lot of potential, but may not, you know, might be, like, anywhere from, like, 5 to 20 cards off. So, uh, you gotta get the reps in, figure out what feels good, what feels bad, and, you know, just go from there. So... Uh, the sideboard was pretty basic. It was a lot of shocks, a lot of wild slashes. There was a magma spray as well. A bunch of feed the clans, a bunch of hunt the hunters. And I'm not sure how I feel about the hunt the hunters. I'm not sure if that's how you actually want to approach those mid-range matchups, but I could certainly be wrong. I mean, this deck definitely wants cheap spells, and that kind of narrows your sideboarding options by a large amount because, you know, there's only so many good cheap spells you can play. And uh, maybe against... Abzan Control, for example, like Disdainful Stroke, Treasure Cruise, stuff like that are all you need. And uh, Matsugan didn't have a lot of this stuff in his sideboard. I think he had one of each. So I kind of just like trimmed the excess stuff that I didn't really like and added another copy of each because I figured that these were almost certainly going to be good. But uh, against Mono Red, Wild Slash and Feed the Clan are probably going to do a pretty good job of both you know, containing the early game, making sure you just don't get run over, and then also feed the clan to lock it up, make sure you don't get burned out in the late game. Uh, turning on Ferocious is not that difficult when you have Death Miss Raptor, Hooting Mandrills, and Soul Artifact in your deck. Also, Ghost Fire Blade is pretty good with it. Uh, so, Ferocious is pretty easy, and uh, being able to Den Protector back up Feed the Clan is also pretty nice. So, like, if you have a Trampler that's hitting them, and they're hitting you with a bunch of Goblins, you know, maybe it doesn't really matter. You have enough Feed the Clans to function as Fog so that Hooting Mandrills can actually get in for the last few points of damage so uh that's basically it this deck kind of looks like a train wreck but there's a lot of cool stuff going on i'm really excited for the game so uh let's get to it 